Hello, I'm Ken Scribner, a senior consultant with Windelect, a company specializing in Windows software consulting, custom Windows software development, and debugging services. Today I'd like to discuss Silverlight 2.0 and a new technology from Microsoft called DeepZoom. Now DeepZoom is a technology from Microsoft that allows your site's user to drill down into an image and view the image in great detail. We'll briefly touch on some of the concepts involved with using DeepZoom with Silverlight 2.0 but there's a lot more to DeepZoom than we'll be able to cover in this brief video. To use DeepZoom, you'll need to download and install the DeepZoom Composer, which you can easily find on the web using the search keys Download DeepZoom Composer. We'll begin by preparing images for the DeepZoom control using the DeepZoom Composer. I'll first create a new project. I'm going to call this project Freestyle. Now the first thing we'll need to do is actually drop some images into the Import tab. So I'm going to drop a couple of images. This gives me a palette of images to work with. With my images in place in my palette, I'm going to move to the Compose tab. Here, I'm going to place images on my design surface. And I'm going to set my composition like so. The reason for this will be apparent when we actually run this in Silverlight. The final thing I'll need to do is actually export this and to a format that we can use with Silverlight. So I'm going to give it the name Freestyle and really this isn't so much the name of a file it is as it is the name of a folder that the composer will create for us. We'll need to keep track of this folder because we're going to need it when we actually import this into Visual Studio. I'll press the export key and then the export is completed. Now let's look at how we actually use the information created for us by the DeepZoom Composer. I've created a brand new Silverlight 2.0 application in Visual Studio 2008 called Deep Freestyle. The first thing I'm going to do is to place an instance of the multi-scale image control into my XAML and to that I'm going to apply a name and I'm going to have to give it source information. This source information is what was generated for us by the, the DeepZoom Composer. Before I can actually add this into my project though, I'm going to need to save everything and compile because I'm going to want to drop it into the client bin folder. I will take that freestyle subdirectory that we just created in the composer and drop it into client bin. Now it turns out that there is a lot more you can do with this control than what I'm going to be able to show you. The advanced things you might like to do such as panning, mouse wheel zooming and so forth just simply take a lot more code than I can describe here given time constraints. However, let's actually make the control zoom. To do that, I'm going to add a key down event handler to my user control and I'll press the tab key and allow Visual Studio to actually add that. Then I'm going to move over to my page.xaml.cs file and actually add some code. Now we're going to zoom in when we press the Z key. We're going to zoom out when we press the X key. So let's see how we do that. We'll first ask the question whether the key was the Z key. If it was, we'll do something there. However, we'll also look for the X key and we'll do something there. If it is any other key, we'll ignore it. Because the multi-scale image control could be maintaining a memory of viewable space that is larger than the space the browser gave it to render. This is called a viewport. 
The multiscale image control maintains a logical set of coordinates for both x and y that range from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. Now since we're not adding panning logic, we'll zoom about the center of the image as currently displayed. For the zooming in logic, we're going to add this code. And since we've handled this keystroke, we'll mark that as handled. Now the zoom about logical point takes three pieces of information. The first is the zoom factor. And a zoom factor greater than one will zoom in. A zoom factor less than one will zoom out. This is the logical x coordinate and the logical y coordinate about which we're going to zoom. Now since the zoom out logic is very similar to the zoom in logic, I'm just simply going to copy that and change my zoom factor. I'll save everything, recompile, did compile. So now I'm going to go to our test page and actually view it in the browser. And indeed, the image that we put together in the Deep Zoom Composer has shown up now. I'm going to click this with the mouse so that we set the input focus so that we'll actually accept the keystrokes. I'll do that now. And now I'm going to push the Z key. Notice that we zoom in. We're actually zooming in on our skier. Look at how far we can zoom in. It's amazing. Now I'm going to push the X key to zoom back out. And look at how far we can zoom out. A number of interesting applications come to mind with technology such as this. I'll let your imagination roam. And that concludes my demo.